Welcome to this Vet Vine, the Fundus is Your Friend segment on subalbinism. The Vet Vine Specialty Consulting Service received this case. An adult male Siberian Husky had presented to the referring veterinarian with the complaint of lethargy and inappetence. Physical exam findings were normal and a fundus exam was performed as part of the examination. This photograph of the patient uh, seen face on demonstrates something typical of the breed in that uh, this patient has what we call heterochromia iridis, meaning he has uh, iris color um, that's different from one and the other. He has one blue eye and one brown eye mixed with some blue color in the same iris. Uh, again, heterochromia iridis. In addition, the service was asked to evaluate this fundus photograph. Uh, we were questioned as to whether or not this patient was demonstrating evidence of posterior segment hemorrhage. To work our way to the correct answer uh, on this and make sense of this photograph, let's briefly review uh, the normal anatomy of the posterior segment. Recall that when we look at the fundus, uh, we're evaluating uh, several uh, architectural components of it, namely uh, the retina. Uh, beneath the retina is the choroid, and external to that is the fibrous outer coat of the eye, the sclera. Recall that the uh, choroid is the posterior extension of the uveal tract, so it's a continuum essentially of the iris and ciliary body into the back part of the eye. This is a highly vascular coat. It is comprised of melanin pigment, just like uh, it is in the anterior part of the uveal tract, and it's also uh, comprised of blood vessels. The sclera of the eye is a continuum of that portion that we can see as we examine the patient front on. Uh, it's the white fibrous outer tunic of the eye. And the retina um, is a fairly complex structure, as we can see in this histologic specimen on the left. The arrow is pointing in the area of the vitreous, and as we work our way from in to out, uh, we pass through the retina, which is again a fairly complex structure. Its outermost layer is called the retinal pigment epithelium. Deep to that, or external to that, is the choroid. Again, you can see in this example uh, a bit of melanin pigment within uh, this area. And deep to that is the sclera. Looking at this in just a different way, on the left is a schematic of uh, the retinal architecture. Innermost to outermost, again, we see this outer layer is the retinal pigment epithelium. And of note here uh, is the following about uh, the architecture in the back of the eye. In animals that have a tapetum, in the dorsal part of the fundus, the retinal pigment epithelium is actually not pigmented. And this is what allows us to uh, actually see a tapetal reflex and for a reflex to actually occur. Conversely, ventral to that, in the ventral portion of that fundus, where there is no tapetum, the retinal pigment epithelium is typically pigmented, thereby giving the appearance of the non-tapetal fundus its darker color appearance. So here we're seeing the jun junction of the tapetal fundus and the non-tapetal fundus, and down here eventually is the darker non-tapetal fundus. So having understood that, now looking at this clinical photograph of this patient, uh, for orientation purposes, you'll see that here along the left is the junction of the tapetal fundus and essentially the non-tapetal fundus. We're catching just the edge of the tapetal fundus, and you can see it has somewhat of a granulated appearance. I would describe this more as tapetal eyelets as opposed to a, a full tapetal uh, development. But in this area here, we see that this patient is devoid of pigmentation. We are seeing a superimposition of retinal vessels. Here's a retinal vein and a retinal arterial. These retinal vessels are superimposed over this tigroid appearance, if you will, of the choroidal vasculature. These thicker um, vessels, this paintbrush kind of tigroid uh, appearance to these vessels um, are vessels of the choroid that have blood within them. And deep to that, because there's a relative uh, lack of melanin pigment, we're seeing the white outer fibrous uh, sclera deep to that. So this patient has what we call a subalbinotic fundus. 
It's not true albinism because we know that this patient does have some pigment in him. Uh, we saw that by seeing the brown uh, iris uh, in the fellow eye. But he does have subalbinism. So in fact, this patient does have blood in the posterior segment of this eye, but the blood is contained appropriately within the vasculature. There's no uh, posterior segment hemorrhage as was uh, suspected in this patient. We see a normal variation of the fundus in a subalbinotic patient. The Vet Vine Specialty Consulting Service reminds you, perform a fundic on every patient as part of your examination. After all, the fundus is your friend.